75 years ago today, more than 160,000 troops from the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, and other allied nations riding in on more than 13,000 aircraft and 5,000 ships stormed the beaches and parachuted into Normandy, France in an effort to help liberate Europe from Nazi tyranny. Today is an international day of remembrance for that deadly and vital mission for the brave men who fought and died on those beaches and in those hamlets. More than 9,380 men are buried at Normandy, which today was the site of the ceremony honoring those lost in the fight for freedom. Now, you might think that such a day and such a setting would compel an American president, a president who himself gave a strong address to mark the occasion of the memorial, to resist from engaging in petty politics on this day and on those grounds. But you would be wrong. Here's President Trump just yards away from the graves of American heroes, asked by his favorite channel about special counsel Robert Mueller, who is not incidentally a veteran of the Vietnam War, awarded a bronze star for valor. Do you mind if he testifies still before you said he didn't care? I, Mueller I, let, testifies. Let me tell you, he made such a fool out of himself the last time she, because what people don't report is the letter he had to do to straighten out his testimony because his testimony was wrong. It's not exactly clear what, what Trump was talking about even since Mueller didn't testify. But, but either way, the, the president also had some choice words in the same setting, just yards from the graves of heroes for House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. But Nancy Pelosi, I call her nervous Nancy. Nancy Pelosi doesn't talk about it. Nancy Pelosi's a disaster, okay? She's a disaster. And let her do what she wants. You know what? I think they're in big trouble. Now, incidentally, when CNN caught up with Speaker Pelosi as she walked into Normandy and asked her about President Trump's threat to impose tariffs on Mexico, this was Pelosi's response. I don't talk about the president when I have the country. That's my principle. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. I don't talk about the president when we're out of the country. It's my principle, so I won't go there, Pelosi said. Now, it's really not that difficult to imagine what the response might be by both the president's party and his protectors on the Hill and in the media if a Democrat, a Democratic president, had engaged in political attacks like that one on the D-Day anniversary, on the grounds of the cemetery and memorial in Colville-sur-Mer, France. But beyond that, is the reverence that needs to be shown to the men in that dirt and to their families and to all those who see meaning in their sacrifice, the sacrifice of their lives for a cause greater than themselves. Now, to be fair to President Trump, he did deliver at Normandy, as I mentioned, remarks that some observers have said were among the best of his presidency. You are among the very greatest Americans who will ever live you are the pride of our nation. You are the glory of our republic. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The question, of course, is whether the president's undermined any of those sentiments by minutes later, seeming to not fully comprehend the sacred ground on which he stood. Let's talk about this uh, with our experts here. Uh, Amanda Carpenter, I want to start with you. What'd you make of that? If you look at the shot and what I see, just as an American, is a draft dodging president who is sitting down with a woman who regularly defends anti-Semites like Paul Nealon, espouses white supremacist talking points while using the graves of World War soldiers who saved the world from Nazis as a prop. I mean, that's what it is. And who made this call? Donald Trump didn't set up that shot. Laura Ingram did it. There's a whole network behind it. There's lots of people who said, yeah, that looks good. This isn't just one person's bad judgment. It's a lot of people's bad judgment. And you don't have to put up with this. People need to say, this is, is not a good look. And so, you know, when Fox News continues to lose advertisers and has liberals mount campaigns to have advertisers drop from them, this makes it pretty darn easy. Uh, Jen Psaki, um, were you at the White House when Ob for the last big anniversary when Obama went over there? I'm not sure if it was the 70th or the 65th. 
I'm just wondering what you make of it all as somebody who used to work in communications for a president who did a similar event. I was. I was actually at the State Department, um, I, I think, at the last time that President Obama went over there. Um, but, you know, to, to build on what Amanda said, which I don't think I could state any more eloquently, this is a moment where you really put politics aside. Obviously, when you go overseas, yes, there's a tradition of that. But when you're preparing to honor the men and women who have served for decades, World War II veterans, some of whom are still living, some of whom were there, this is a moment where you're not only not talking about partisan politics, you're trying to give a speech that is bringing the country and the world together. And that's, you know, when you're preparing for a speech like that, that's really the focus. You're not talking about the political campaign. You're not talking about your opponents and what they're up to. And that's the kind of speech President Obama would have given. I like to think that's the kind of speech President Bush and President Clinton and other presidents would, would have given. So to Amanda's point, this is really out of the norm, um, and it's beyond out of the norm. And we should really take a moment to remember that, uh, because sometimes we get a little numb to, to the uh, oddities and absurdities of the Trump presidency. Now, to, to the, as, as I mentioned, the president gave a speech that moved a lot of people, a lot of even his critics have said it was a very powerful speech. But what is it about him, as, as two people who cover him, what is it about him that he, he can't seem to understand that when you're, when you're sta sitting in a cemetery with literally the, the bodies of the men from the 101st Airborne right behind you, that's not a good time to even talk about politics, much less engage in these personal attacks. Well, but, but the president knows that he can get away with this, and he has time and time again, not only because the Republican Party is, is behind him and has essentially approved and codified all of the norm-breaking things that he has done, but this is the president who, as a candidate, right, uh, went after John McCain and his service, a man who was tortured uh, in, in uh, Vietnam uh, for, for years as a prisoner of war, and of course, that was the moment where the political establishment said, that's it, the president, you know, Donald Trump is finished as a candidate. And it was very much not the case at all. In fact, his poll numbers continue to rise from yeah. there. So this is someone who, who has seen that kind of quote unquote bad behavior uh, rewarded rather than uh, punished or rebuked time and time again. And Laura, I want to ask you because uh, you work for Politico and Politico has a big scoop. Before Pelosi left the United States mm -hmm. to go to Normandy, you saw she wouldn't even talk about President Trump at Normandy. Before she went, um, according to Politico, uh, in a private closed door meeting with members of the Democratic caucus, she said something along the lines of, instead of seeing the president impeached, I'd like to see him in prison. Right. Um, that's a pretty stunning statement. It is, and this is very strategic by Pelosi. She, I don't really think that her underlying calculus has changed that much. She doesn't really want to pursue impeachment. She wants to guard the majority that they won in 2018, but she also knows that she has a lot of Democrats now, I think about 60, and that's not counting others who just haven't said it publicly, that are itching to go down that route. And she, Democrats, uh, the base, wants the party to go down that route. So she has to have a bit of a release valve. So this is her saying, look, I hear you. I also really don't like this president. I want to see him held responsible, but you have to give us some time. But on that note, I think this is really reckless of her to do. I, she's a bad messenger. They need to get someone else to message this because she's essentially saying there's a cover up. OK, explain the cover up. I can make the case. I've read the Mueller report, but now she's saying she wants to see him in prison. Well, for what crimes? If you believe crimes occurred, you have an obligation to go through impeachment, regardless of the politics of the Senate. Make your case. Don't just throw this out there because that's just the same as going on the campaign trail and saying, lock her up. But she wasn't throwing it out there. I agree this was a strategic thing she was doing in this meeting, of, of which, uh, in the story by Politico, there was a mix of views from the mm -hmm. chairs of the committees who were in this meeting. Some have been pushing her to move forward with impeachment. Some have not been. She's saying to them, essentially, I'm with you. I hate this guy. I want him out of office. But I know a lot about politics, and I know how this should go, and I still don't think we should move forward with impeachment. That's what she was saying, and that's why she used that language.